The title of our project is Narrow Layer Ribbon Fibers. And uh, our co uh, the, the investigators are myself, Abby Whittington, and Randy Hill. The primary research question that we wanted to answer was, can nanofibers be produced using a melt process? And the reason for wanting to do that is nanofibers have, there's a strong interest in nanofibers for, because of their large surface areas, and their applications include infiltration, scaffolds for tissue engineering, or sensors. But all of the nanos, nanofiber work that has been done so far has focused on creating nanofibers from either solvent or water. With the use of solvent for creating nanofibers, there are problems or issues dealing with toxicity of the solvent, the environmental concerns, and the recovery of the solvent. In the case of water, there are limitations because you are limited to polymers that are water soluble. So our research objective was to investigate the possibility of creating nanofibers using melt electro spinning. But even with melt electro spinning, there are some drawbacks because most of the work that has been done so far has shown that melt electro spun fibers do not contain nanofibers, but they have microfibers. And the reason for that is there is no solvent that evaporates during the electro spinning process. So even with melt electro spinning, there are some drawbacks. And so the approach that we have taken is to create layers within the fibers that are melt electro spun. So by creating layers within each electro spun fiber, now we can delaminate the layers and create fibers that are thin enough with increased surface areas, and therefore we now can get high surface area nanofibers using a melt electro spinning process. So the process for creating melt electro spun nanofibers is shown here. We have a schematic uh, that's shown here and the, the equipment that we have set up here. And I point that out as a highlight because we started out with an empty room. We didn't have any equipment at all. So we started out putting this equipment together using for this concept. And so if you look at the schematic, we have two extruders that feed two different polymers into a multiplier system. And the layered melt streams are fed to a die. A die can be either a melt blown die or a melt electro spun die. And the reason I point out the melt blown die is that is probably a more uh, scalable process. The difference is that when the melt is delivered to the die, you either have high voltage between the die and the collector that drives the fiber formation process, or you have high velocity air that drives the, uh, is the pressure, is the driving force for creating the fibers. So if you have high voltage between the die and the collector, you have melt electro spinning. If you have high velocity air between the die and the drum, you have melt blowing. But the fibers that are formed now contain layers and the schematic of the layering process is shown here as it goes through each layer multiplier. So we have polymer A and polymer B that's cut and stacked and squeezed. And now the two layers become four layers. As it goes through the next layer multiplier, the four layer stream is cut, stacked and squeezed. And the four layers become eight layers. And the process continues on depending on how many layer multipliers you use. So in our process, we started out with a three-layer feed block. And by this cutting and uh, splitting and stacking process, we were able to get up to 1,027 layers, alternating layers, within each single fiber. So the fiber itself is about 10 microns in diameter. But within that 10, di 10 micron diameter fiber, we can get up to about 1,000 layers using this process. Now this layer multiplying process is not unique to what we are doing. This has been done both academically in academic circles and in industrial circles by other companies. But what's unique to what we are doing is that no one has done this layer multiplying process in combination with fibers. So this is something unique for what we are doing. And so we've also shown that wide-width melt electrospun 
of military electro spinning can be done with this process. So that is something um, I think we are that we have done that's unique uh, in this situation. And the melt blown die was donated by 3M company, and that allowed us to get into melt blowing, which is a more uh, scalable process compared to melt electro spinning. So some of the technical highlights in terms of what we have done so far, uh, in terms of data. These are some electron micrographs that show how we have delaminated the fibers to get uh, thin fibers. So here we have, by using either sonication or by rinsing in solvent, we have been able to create delamination. And this slide here shows the width of the layers after delamination. And the layer, the width of the fibers are approximately five to 10 microns in diameter. And that's actually the width, that's the diameter of the fiber. And that's what we would expect. But the thickness of each layer is about 200 nanometers. And that's where the nano part comes in. So here with 257 layers within each fiber, the thickness of the layers are about 200 to 250 nanometers and we hope that we will be able to get thinner as we increase the number of layers within each fiber. But we also found that when we uh, rinse in chloroform, these flat ribbons tend to curl up into cylindrical fibers, which are approximately 200, 100, 200 nanometers in diameter. That was unexpected, and that's something we would like to explore if we can capitalize on controlling this process, which can then lead to cylindrical fibers, which could be hollow. We don't know whether it's hollow or not at this point, but that's something we need to explore to find out if we can use uh, rinsing in a solvent or a suitable liquid to create these cylindrical fibers, which could be hollow. The smallest cylindrical fibers that we have obtained are about 50 to 60 to 120 nanometers. So that's getting into the nano scale range and using a melt process. And so in terms of highlights, I think uh, we have developed, uh, we have established a co-extrusion process for the creation of nanofibers. But I think it's more than that. We have created a process where we can not only create nanofibers, but also nanolayer films by changing the dye instead of having a melt blowing dye or a melt electro spinning dye, we can use the extrusion process and connect it with a film dye, which will allow us to get nano layers within the film. That in combination with different polymer pairs allows us to now create a wide range of polymer materials with different properties without having to synthesize new materials. And also now we have successfully transitioned from nano layer melt electro spinning to melt blowing, which is a scalable process. Uh, in terms of funding, I think all of the funding that we uh, has come through ICTAS, and I'd say that uh, you know here also with these key collaborations, without the support of ICTAS, this work would not have been possible. Particularly, uh, Ruth Mahajan and uh, Bob Moore, they they helped get this off the ground. Um, in terms of publications, we have presented this work at a few meetings and we have submitted to Nano Letters. We have filed the uh, patent uh, on melt electro spinning and we hope to file another one on melt blowing in the, in the near future. Key successes, I think one was kind of interesting because we had strong interest from Hollingsworth and Boss, one of the Nano, uh, it's one of the non-woven manufacturers. They are in Giles, uh, also with Kimberly Clark, but I think we have pulled off a little bit from those interactions because I think there's a decision to proceed with maybe creating a startup possibility led by uh, Dr. Mahajan and, uh, and uh, Jaime Camillo. Collaborations, we don't have very many outside collaborations, but I thought I should mention the the people who contributed to this work, three postdocs, many undergraduate students, a senior design team from the material science and engineering department, and we also got some uh, equipment and material support from 3M. And again, the support of ICTAS was uh, critical without the work that have been done. So with that, I will close.